So 2017 Skull Island is pretty dangerous. Not as dangerous as the 2005 Skull Island, which has just numerous amounts of predators and herbivores that'll kill you. But again, still dangerous nevertheless here. But I always wondered what would happen if we took one of our classic day kaijus, you know, old, old school kaiju, you know what I'm saying? And we threw them on Skull Island. Now, we are going to be only using everything from the Kong 2017 to the Skull Island TV series, as that time was, you know, before Godzilla x Kong, the new empire and stuff like that. And we're going to be throwing in Reptilicus. Yes, the invincible, indestructible serpent himself. So we're actually going to be talking about how this creature handles, what this creature can do, and well, if it can survive Skull Island. And if it can, we'll also talk about the ramifications of it leaving or if it staying in the monsters as a whole. So without further ado, um, we're going to be obviously scaling the creature and scaling most of Skull Island. Pretty much everyone there should be just about a city block or city level creature at that point here. Considering Kong is over 100 feet, which actually gets him there. And then by the Skull Island series, he's actually stated to be a bit bigger than what he originally was. So he should be closing in on what we see in Godzilla vs. Kong, but not too far from there. So again, keep in mind that this is 2017 to Skull Island anime Kong which is, again, before Godzilla vs. Kong. So without further ado, let's actually scale Reptilicus. Now, Reptilicus, or Reptilosaurus, which, again, is Reptilicus either way here, is actually able to withstand a bomb that was capable of pulverizing islands. Now, I understand there are versus Battles wiki calcs, and I actually, you know, looked at them here, where they actually got this to mountain level, and um, I'm not sure how because i mean it's a bomb that pulverizes an entire island like that's that, shouldn't that be island level but let's say it is mountain level just for i guess the sake of this video so it's not too overkill for the kaiju um well reptilicus would be very powerful and he's actually capable of flying and reacting to supersonic and hypersonic jets at this time here so yeah he's pretty powerful he's also capable of withstanding nukes as we saw earlier and atomic bombs as well so dude is actually pretty powerful and pretty fast however reptilicus has also been hit with rock slides which are known to be around the town level in terms of destructive capability and stuff like that there and then we have the sheer fact that Reptilicus has survived being in lava. So dude is just absolutely durable. <laughs> and here's the thing. He has a very potent healing factor. However, here's the thing, right? If you are able to like chop him up somehow and you leave the pieces there, it can regenerate and form each piece, by the way, would form an individual Reptilicus. So he would have multiple versions of themselves running around however this does take a little bit of time so yeah but standard wounds like cuts stabs and you know um blows and blows to cause internal damage yeah he can generate from that instantly so yeah minor damage you know it's casual to him but then you also share the fact that reptilicus also has acid spit yeah this dragon believe it or not here or this dragon snake is able to spit acid and is venomous as well. So, um, yeah, I think that kind of covers it. So, let's start off with Skull Island's basic creatures. So, this will include the following. The Icarus Tiger, the Meyer Squid, and the Siren Jaw. Also, the Swamp Locust as well here. And, well, in all honesty, yeah, they kind of get eaten. There's really nothing they can do. They don't have the attack potency to even harm a younger Kong. And Younger Kong eats Meyer squids, and I'm definitely going to say he definitely eats Siren Jaws, because again, Kong was, what's the word I'm looking for here? Kong um was need, in need of more food at that time. He was, I wouldn't say he was starving, but as the bigger he got, he was just starting to eat a lot more of Skull Island's resources here. So this means he would start eating Scarbuffaloes, the Chameleons possibly even skull crawlers if it 
came down to it, you know? So him eating the siren jaws and Myra squids here is nothing compared to, I guess you could say, what Reptilicus would do. And the sure fact that, again, acid. That just eats through anything and it just melts flesh on impact. So, yeah, they're they're dead. They're eaten. Plus, if you're wondering why I'm not mentioning any smaller creatures, um, what are they going to do? They're just snacks at that point here. So, next up, we do have the juvenile skull crawlers. And, well, I would say they're a little bit difficult. They're definitely more agile than Reptilicus here. I mean, agile as in you know, classic day portrayals here. But if we say we gave it a more modern day Monsterverse rendition of Reptilicus, but with, you know, his stats from the previous or his movies and comics and stuff like that there, then yeah, he is definitely going to just snake around the skull crawlers and just constrict it. Now, um, actually, I don't think I should have said the Icarus Tiger because it's definitely above the Siren Jaw and... Even the Myra Squid. Now, I would definitely say it's above Juvenile Skull Crawls as well here. But um, believe it or not, these guys are pretty impressive. And maybe I have them in the wrong place because it might be above Ramorak as well. Considering it did harm a much older Kong. But then again, Kong simply grabbed it like it was a owner with its cat. And then proceeded to crack its neck. Kind of ridiculous though in my opinion. It, 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 but it is what it is here. The only thing that would make the Icarus Tiger a bit more difficult than Ramorak would be the illusion ability. But again, it wouldn't be able to do too much damage anyway. Now, next up, we have Ramorak. And believe it or not, I think Ramorak could put up a decent challenge. I definitely think it would be interesting to see if Ramorak would try to bite the head of Reptilicus. Only for Reptilicus to, like, pour acid down its stomach. And that that does sound, like, very disturbing. And it, ugh. It actually hurts my insides just thinking about it here. And, well, um, if he does that, then I don't see anything stopping him from beating Kong at that point. I mean, Kong wasn't as strong as he was when he fought Godzilla at that point. The best cure kaiju he fought was the Kraken, which I do believe Reptilicus would be able to beat as well because, again, he is a bit more leaner or at least slicker especially if we're giving a more modern interpretation for him but then again the kraken would probably wrap itself wrap or wrap around on reptilicus and then try to electrocute it only for reptilicus to probably like drop acid on its tendrils and stuff like that there and believe it or not this is where we kind of get into the part where reptilicus kind of remains in the monsterverse because again, I don't think I want to drag this video on as long as I need to. So Reptilicus being in the Monsterverse here does change a lot of things here. For stars, we know the Monsterverse Kaiju actually feed on all sorts of radiation here. And again, if anyone's wondering about the whole black hole thing and what I think about it. Again, yes, the Kaiju do have some relative scaling to it. But again, they are not solar system level. Okay. They're comparing the energy levels of the kaiju to black holes because this is all they have to compare it to. And again, this is because, again, these kaiju feed on multiple forms of radiation. So, believe it or not, if Reptilicus can also do that and he spends enough time in the Monsterverse to, well, feed on radiation and then Monsterverse has a more grounded setting on the more resources that you have the bigger you'll become this means reptilicus will likely be eating more and definitely growing more to the point where he's going to be a problem and this radiation may also give him a boost to his other abilities meaning that his healing factor could very well become a form of reproduction so this means that if anyone rips a piece off a of reptilicus it could pretty much grow into another well reptilicus in general kind of like how king of doors regeneration works except it's regenerating a whole new reptilicus in general and believe it or not i think that's going to be a very big problem for the monsters here because we're reptilicus destructive nature and again saying that they're well adjusted to the monsters here then godzilla is going to need his burning form in order to deal with a reptilicus outbreak but then again we don't know if this burning form can last that long here considering it did three nuclear pulses and then it just well burnt him out and then you would also have to make the argument that all the reptilicus are just going to be in one area if he can't get the outbreak under control right then and there 
then it's pretty much done there. So, um, with that being said here, this means that Reptilicus could pretty much just run rampant in the Monsterverse, likely causing problems for everything on the surface, and then possibly going down to the Hollow Earth and causing the same problems, if not just finding a natural role in the ecosystem, because there probably would be predators down there that would be able to eat a Monsterverse rendition or a Monsterverse, um, I guess you could say, uh... Yeah, I, I, I may want to say rendition of Reptil Reptilicus. I'm sorry, I went off a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I think that kind of covers it for Reptilicus here. I think he would definitely beat Skull Island pretty easily. And as for what he would become in the monsters, dude wouldn't be an absolute nightmare for anyone and everyone. But that's going to be all for today. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to friends. And I'll see you guys later for the Gorgo and Ogre video. Peace.